Hi, Jeff Boyce Carls, and that is my uh, Alfa Romeo 166. It's actually not my Alfa Romeo 166, it's Matt's Alfa Romeo 166. But there's a good story as to why I'm now in Borton on Water with an Alfa Romeo 166, um, which I shall tell you. Better get the car off the bridge because uh, I'm going to cause a traffic jam, and a traffic jam in the Cotswolds is the last thing you want. So basically today I was due to go down to Guildford to collect Matt's blue BMW E39 and I had a train booked at 7 o'clock this morning but it was going to be 3 hours and 45 minutes. Anyway, late last night uh, Matt found this car, it was finishing on eBay in sort of 20 minutes time and he said to me, shall I buy this, is it near you? And I said, well it is sort of close to me. Um, so he said, look, I don't want the car, I don't need the car, but what I'll do is I'll put a cheeky bid on it, and if I manage to win it, then uh, then we'll deal with that the consequences of that as and when that happens. So he put £966.66 and 66 pence in as his top bid, and sure enough, 20 minutes later, sent me a text message saying, I've only gone and won it. So I then, instead of getting on a train to Guildford, drove to Borton on the Water to collect this car, and now I'm gonna drive it down to Matt in Guildford after I've caused a traffic jam in Borton on the Water. Very sorry. But it is a X-Reg, um, which is 2000 Alfa Romeo 166, 120,000 miles. It's a two liter twin spark. And the seller quite rightly said to me, you can look at it as an expensive Fiat or a cheap Maserati. So in true Jeff buys cars fashion, this is my cheap Maserati. So I was here with my Volvo early this morning and the lady said to me, you're not driving through, are you? The only people that drive through here are idiots in four wheel drives who are showing off. And um, I'm not an idiot in a four-wheel drive, I'm an idiot in an Alfa Romeo. You'll notice that the fuel flap is open. I've been advised to leave the fuel flap open just because this is an Alfa Romeo and they do have electrical gremlins and um, I don't want to tempt fate by closing the fuel flap and then not being able to open it again. So let's have a little look inside this car because it is beautiful. Couldn't have picked a more scenic spot here for a for a little video. A couple of, couple of dogs there just, just having a bath. Are they enjoying their bath? couple of happy dogs so unlike um, you know this is not a happy dog this car is actually a really good one it's not a dog I think it's a really superb example it's actually one owner from new and the chap that Matt bought it from on eBay I don't think Matt knows this yet so he might be finding this out for the first time this car was actually bought by a local Cotswold based premium car dealer to put on display during an Italian car event basically they had ended up with a load of Italian cars that they wanted to shift so they bought this um, pretty much just to park in the yard and make it look like they had more Italian cars. Then the, um, the one of the directors of the company smoked around in it for a little bit and recently put it up on eBay. So that's why it's here and that's why it's for sale. So like I said, 120,000 miles. It's got plenty of history. It's clearly been owned by an enthusiast. And um, take a look inside this car it is beautiful so we do have heated seats although i've been told that um the driver's side doesn't work because the switch is missing sorry it does work but the switch is missing so matt you need to buy one of these and i've been told there's only eight of them left and they're 36 pound each so i'll send you a link look at the way the dashboard shapes around the driver and the passenger it is lovely better just check it's not overheating whilst we're idling here no we're okay you never know with a cheap car let alone a cheap italian car but that is absolutely lovely. What a fantastic place to be in my cheap Maserati. Look at the way the rear seats are so sculpted. Look at the shape of that. You know, for a passenger, what a wonderful place to be. It's a great looking car. It's got these iconic Alfa Romeo five hole pepper pot style alloy wheels, which are the only alloy wheels to have on an Alfa Romeo. Look at the way that swage line runs all the way down the car. It's got that angular look to it. It's a very, very attractive car. The front end, I can't really film the front end without getting myself too wet. If I go up on the bridge, look. Look how tiny the headlights are. It's got tiny headlights relative to the size of the car, but it makes it all the more elegant. So, Italian design, what a great looking car. Inside, in the driver's side, it's a six speed, so it's a two litre, 122,000 miles. Uh, needs the radio code putting in. Um, that's perhaps a little bit cheap, isn't it? The way all of that works. Um, you know, you'd expect a little bit more from a cheap Maserati, but maybe that's why it's cheap. Maybe that's where they save the money. So manual gearbox, beautiful gray leather. 
absolutely stacked of paperwork with this car. And as I said, it was one owner until last year. So I think, Matt, I know you haven't seen this car yet. You will do in a couple of hours when I get down to your house. I think you've done very, very well indeed with your Alpha 166. Right, let's um, jump in, complete the journey, and uh, see how it drives, shall we? Well, I kind of know how it drives. It drives really well. It's lovely. Shall I just keep this? Shall I keep this and just par Matt off completely? Be like, look, Matt, I know you bought that car, but um, I'm having it. No, let's take it down to Matt's house. And it feels firm. Everything feels solid. What does it remind me of? Um, I don't know. It's 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 not. It's not BMW, but it's got a solidity to it that you don't perhaps have. Um, to be honest, most of the cars I, I buy and drive are cheaper than this, but this is a proper car. I'm talking crap. Right, it's got six gears. I can't find any of them. Okay, first impressions of the car. The gear change is a bit odd, and there's probably Alfa Romeo 166 people watching this video saying, oh, well, that's because there's a bushing that goes on the bottom of the gear stick on the Alfa 166, and if they haven't been done, then it, it's really difficult to get them into gear. And if that is true, then post that exact thing in the comment comments, and then I can tell Matt when I get to his house. Um, but generally, it's, it's really lovely. You shouldn't be able to buy cars this nice for this much money. 966 pounds and 66 pence, and it's beautiful, luxurious, presentable, stylish, comfortable, capable. It's the perfect Jeff car. It's everything that a Jeff car needs to be. It's cool enough and reliable enough to use every day. It's cool enough to drive to a wedding. It's cool enough to take to a car show, but it's old enough and cheap enough to take it to the tip. I love it. It drives really well. Right, I'm gonna have to stop and do some research and um, get on Wikipedia and find out what the Alfa Romeo 166 is all about because this time yesterday I had no idea that I was going to be driving to Guildford in an Alfa Romeo 166. In fact, not even 12 hours ago. I'm not wearing a watch. Well, the gear change is a bit odd. That's lovely. Yeah, really, really nice. Matt, you're going to love this car. You really are. Right, so I've just sent a voice message to Matt saying that the owner was a bit cagey about whether or not the car would start again um, due to the quality of the battery. But then I saw a sign saying crocodiles of the world and I thought, I blooming love a crocodile. Crocodiles are like my favorite thing. If I was gonna be an animal, if I get reincarnated, I want to come back as a crocodile. So not a bad place to have broken down. I'm gonna go inside and see if I can, um, I don't know, steal a, well, I need some crocodile clips, don't I, anyway? And uh, ideally attached to a jump leads, which is ideally attached to someone's car. Um, but maybe I could come out with a, do they sell crocodiles? I'd like a crocodile. I think my kids would quite like a crocodile. So I'm gonna go inside and check out the crocodiles whilst I work out a plan for um, finding someone to help me jump start my car. <laughs> crocodiles are cool, aren't they? Right, let's go to the main entrance. Here we go, look crocodiles of the world and I found a crocodile it's actually my sort of crocodile because it's made out of well all sorts probably old car bits yeah that's my sort of crocodile isn't it it's probably made out of a Saab 95 aero hot turbo let's go see if we can get some jump leads all right turns out breaking down at a crocodile zoo is basically the best place you can break down not only do they have crocodiles but they also have some jump leads so i paid my 10 pounds to have a look at some crocodiles because i like crocodiles and she says to me well in 12 minutes time there's a nile crocodile feeding which is going to be great i hope they're feeding it um a criminal i don't think they do that anymore but it'd be good wouldn't it um so there we go whilst i wait to uh sort out getting the alpha mayor started i might as well indulge in some crocodiles what a great day out this has turned out to be still got that mark on my head haven't i from my five-year-old throwing a dinosaur at me these are sort of dinosaurs aren't they shall i show you some crocodiles is that a snapping turtle and there's fish and all sorts crocodile at the back there I mean, love a crocodile, I do. I really do like crocodiles. Look at him. I'll tell you what else is nice about this crocodile place. It's really warm. It's only about four degrees outside at the moment and it's quite cold. So I've come in here and I'm refreshingly warm. 
The reason I'd like to be a crocodile is all they do is wake up in the morning, lie in the sun to warm themselves up, mess about in the water, being like the kings of the water, holding their breath for ages and ages, and then they might eat some food. Maybe have a fight with a jaguar, and then go to sleep, do it all again. Here we go. Spectacled caiman. I like a caiman. Panama. Get these in Panama. I've been to Panama. I actually, uh, I actually spent a bit of time in Panama surfing and um, found out after I'd spent six weeks there surfing in, in sort of a delta that comes off of the mangroves. One day I, I was convinced that I'd seen a crocodile and my friends were like, no, 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 it's a big log, it's a big log, but it was going against the current. I was like, I'm confident that was a crocodile. And uh, I got out of the water and sort of went and had dinner and whatnot. And I later found out from one of the fishermen that there were indeed crocodiles in, um, in the bit between the sea and the mangrove, so it could well have been. And he was also like, oh yeah, there's bull sharks as well. I didn't know that either. Look at those teeth. What a cool animal. It's just hanging out, not using any energy. Just absolutely chilling. You can see why I'd like to be a crocodile. I'm getting a bit bigger in here, look. It is kind of funny that I'm here on my own and there's all like school parties of children enjoying this experience and I'm just like having the time of my life. Yes, my car is broken down in the car park, but um, I like to make the most of bad situations. Oh, there's another one there, look. Absolutely brilliant. I'm so glad my car broke down today. Right, got some gifts. I got a, a mug for Mrs. Jeff with crocodile on it, which is great, because to be honest, she can be a bit snappy. And uh, a little crocodile for my two small crocodiles at home. So, um, right, let's go get the car jump started and crack on with the car video. Genuinely, can't think of a better place to have broken down today. Um, I mean, I was curious about the crocodile thing, which is why I pulled in here. And then when I got in the car park, I was like, I'll just risk it for a biscuit and see if I turn the car off, it turns back on. To be honest, if it had turned back on, I probably would have just carried on with my day and um, not experienced any, any crocodiles. But because the car is broken down in the car park, I am stuck here and I was able to enjoy the, uh, the Nile crocodile feeding. So a brilliant day out for Jeff Buys Cars. Now I'm gonna go see that nice chap on the desk and um, see if he can help me get my car started and then carry on with the rest of my day. Maybe not with all the school children. This is Andy, head of the visitor <laughs> experience. And I'll tell you what, you have just given me a fantastic visitor experience because Andy has been able to rescue my Alfa Romeo and um, otherwise I think, it, what's the punishment for leaving a car in a car park too long? They just feed you to the alligators. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Crocs get their extra lunch. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, thanks very much, Andy. I've had a wonderful day. Anything to say for people who are thinking of visiting the... Come, uh, the... come down and see us. Uh, we're a very unique zoo. Uh, and we offer something that other zoos don't. Exactly, and if you have just bought an Alfa Romeo in Borden on the Water with a questionable battery, this is a great place to jumpstart it. <laughs> Cheers, Andy. Thanks. See you later. Cheers. Car starts, it is just the battery that's the problem. I had a fantastic little time at the Crocodiles of the World um, place in the Cotswolds. You've got to get yourself down there, make sure you go to the crocodile feeding, because that was really cool. I would not want to fall in that tank. Um, 
but that should definitely be a form of capital punishment, shouldn't it? Um, it'd be way more fun, and they definitely get more visitors, spectators, for capital punishment if that's the way they did it. Um, just be like, can you imagine like all school parties. All right, everybody, you've arrived just in time. At 12 o'clock, we'll be throwing a criminal to the crocodiles. Be great. All these little kids crying. Anyway, I'm now leaving Crocodiles of the World and carrying on with my car review. I'm getting to know this car better and better. Um, I've got to admit, I went in the Crocodile place and then when we came out to jumpstart the car, I came around the corner and I looked at it and I just thought, what a great looking car. It really is. Like, why would you not own a £1,000 Alfa Romeo 166? Yes, you need to buy a new battery for it, but it's beautiful. It's a very elegant car. It's very comfortable. I've got ample power and um, there's plenty of space. You know, the kids would have more than enough space in the back. There's definitely more space than there is in my Volvo 850. Um, so th there we have it. I think that, that pretty much is my review on the Alfa Romeo 166. A beautiful, large, luxurious, premium saloon, a cheap Maserati from Italy. Now generally, there's, there's, there's honestly very little to report. Uh, I'm driving a cheap car, it's lovely. It's overheating! Get some air into it, get some air into it. Okay, it's coming back down, it's coming back down, it's coming back down. Oh my gosh, this is scary. I'm driving an overheating out from there, let me in some. Okay, it's come back down now. But when I was sat in traffic then, it went right up. Then I've whacked the heat up it's come back down so now I'm just going to take it easy and hope that the temperature stays there actually for all my car adventures this hasn't happened very often just traffic is it traffic around where am I I'm trying to get from the Cotswolds down to Guildford so I'm basically going through like Oxford way and there's that many traffic lights. I just need to get on the motorway and then I'll be moving and there'll be air going through the engine and then it will be fine. Um, that's my theory anyway. I almost feel like what actually happened was the thermostat was blocked. I don't know if that's a thing, but that's what it felt like because as soon as I cranked the air on, because this car was fine, it idled fine the whole time I was chatting to the guy, the whole time I was doing that video. And I just wonder whether it's now going to be fine. It's super stressful, super stressful. But it's also funny. And incidentally, if I had stolen an alligator or a crocodile from the, the world of crocodiles and the Cotswolds, I would now have created inside this car very comfortable ambient temperature for a cold-blooded reptile. That's what I'm going to deal with for the rest of this one hour and a half drive. Um, the tropics. It's tropical in here. It's going to be fine. The temperature stabilised and I think I'm worrying about nothing. But, as I said before, anyone that's bought old cars knows that it ain't over until it's over. And by that, I mean it's not over until either the car has reached its destination or it is by the side of the road with all of the coolant coming out in big plumes out the sides of the bonnet. So, which is it gonna be today? <laughs> oh man, I love old cars. And done, there we go. The car is here, uh, 95 miles plus a little bit more because it would have reset itself when the battery died at the Crocodile place. Um, so I'll do a little bit of video now and we can have a look at these two premium cars. Italy's finest on an X and Germany's finest on a Y. And if I go next to these two cars, we can have a little comparison. Now the 166 is slightly larger than the 530. Um, but don't forget the Alfa Romeo range also consisted of the 156 as well at the same time. So two premium saloons from, um, from Alfa Romeo. And I can't remember 
if this would be competing with the 7 Series or the 5 Series or whether it was a little bit of both. There is a 7 Series over there, but I'm not going to look at that today. So let's go and check out these two cars. Right, inside the Alpha, it is just absolutely beautiful. I've loved it. I've really enjoyed this drive down here. Um, I love the way that the, the dashboard is sculpted around the driver and the passenger. I love the way everything seems to be about the driver and the passenger and about the passengers in, you know, in, in the back as well. It, it's a car that's about the people. So look at the shape of the seats. Look at the cut here. Um, it's a comfortable place to be. It's going to hold you in. It's going to feel good. You're going to sit an, on a long drive and you're going to enjoy being in this car. Look at the padding on these door cards. That's proper, that is. Proper luxury. Very, very nice indeed. Very nice. Window switches on the doors on this one and then on the driver's door, you've got those as well. But look at the, look at the cut of that door card and the way it meets, that, meets the dashboard. It's lovely. It's a very comfortable, pleasant place to be. Um, handbrake and gear stick. I don't like the gear change on this car, but I don't know if that's because it's this car and this car specifically, if you see what I mean, and not a 166 problem. Um, this bit doesn't pop up on the offer. That's the only thing I found that is broken so far. Uh, and that's that. That that is that is the Alpha. So moving on over to Germany's finest. Again, this car does need a good clean, to be fair. It needs a proper valet, but I've got nice door cards. I've got a nice bit of wood on the inside there. I've got typical German understated luxury. These aren't the original seats from a car. I have since discovered they have been added and they do need a damn good clean. But I got a lot of wood on the inside. Oh, I do feel at home in an E39, especially an automatic. I'm, I'm looking forward to driving this one back with its... Um, three litre diesel engine it should do 40 odd miles to the gallon on the run home in theory so it's got pipe leather in the front but not the back i know it has so they have put the back ones in as well um it's very nice but you have to admit after looking at that interior it's not as nice as the alpha is it i think this you know the alpha is a cleaner car in the true sense of the word it's been cleaned properly um, and it's also half the mileage. This is a 200,000 mile BMW. But which car would you rather drive long distance? The, um, the opulent Alpha or the BMW? Got to be honest, after the experience I've just had on the drive home, I'd probably go for the BMW because it's just been MOT'd and it's just been serviced and it's probably going to work for the duration of any journey that I take it on. That being said, if the question is which is the better looking car of the two, it is without a doubt the Alfa Romeo because the Alfa is absolutely lovely. Don't get me wrong, the BMW is a good looking car. I mean, that, that is, that's BMW at their peak, isn't it? The E39 is a great looking car, but the Alpha is something different. Elegant, stylish, aggressive. Yeah, very, very cool. You also look a little bit like you're in the Italian Mafia and um, that can never be a bad thing. Speaking of the Italian Mafia, I think they're over here. That's not the Italian Mafia, is it? That's the Albanian Mafia. Is that a V10? It is as well. V10 TDI. I would not want a, I don't want to see a repair bill for trying to put that right. Anyway, that's that, that'll do. Uh, thank you very much for watching my little video comparing these two cars. I'm now gonna jump in the 530 diesel and um, head home with or without crocodiles. YouTube's most boring car channel.